The selection of the AS-21 Redback by the Australian Defence Force marks a pivotal shift in the global hierarchy of armoured warfare manufacturers. For decades, the heavy armour market has been dominated by established European giants, particularly German engineering firms, renowned for their mechanical precision and historical pedigree. The Land 400 Phase 3 program, a contest to replace the aging M113 armoured personnel carriers of the Australian Army, served as a direct confrontation between this established order and the rising capabilities of the South Korean defence industry. The ultimate victory of Hanwha Aerospace over Rheinmetall Defence is not merely a commercial success worth approximately 7 billion Australian dollars. It represents a technical and strategic validation of South Korean methodology in a top-tier Western military market. The competition pitted the AS-21 Redback against the Lynx KF-41 from Rheinmetall. Initially, industry observers viewed the German contender as the presumptive favorite. Rheinmetall had previously secured the contract for the Boxer Combat Reconnaissance Vehicle under Land 400 Phase 2, giving them an incumbent advantage and an established logistics footprint in Australia. However, the outcome of the Comprehensive Risk Mitigation Activity conducted by the Australian Department of Defence, revealed that the decision was driven by specific performance differentiators rather than legacy relationships. The Redback did not win because it was a cheaper alternative. It won because it offered a superior technical solution tailored specifically to the unique operational requirements of the Australian continent. One of the most decisive technical factors in this victory was the implementation of the composite rubber track system. Traditional heavy armored vehicles utilize steel tracks, which offer durability but generate significant noise, vibration, and rolling resistance. The Australian Army operates across vast distances, often requiring vehicles to deploy hundreds of kilometers over semi-arid terrain. The steel tracks utilized by the Lynx KF-41 while proven in European theaters transmit high levels of vibration to the chassis. This vibration accelerates mechanical fatigue on the vehicle and more critically, physical fatigue on the crew and dismounted infantry inside. Hanwha Aerospace leveraged composite rubber track technology to fundamentally alter the operator experience. This system reduces vibration by nearly 70% compared to steel tracks. The reduction in noise and vibration allows the vehicle to move more stealthily and ensures that soldiers arrive at the objective in a better physiological state to fight. While Rheinmetall offered composite rubber tracks as an option later in the process, the Redback was designed with this technology as a core component of its mobility profile from the outset. This foresight demonstrated a deep understanding of the end-user requirements, prioritizing the human element of warfare alongside mechanical protection. Protection systems provided another arena where the South Korean platform distinguished itself through integration rather than adaptation. Both competitors offered active protection systems designed to shoot down incoming anti-tank missiles and rocket-propelled grenades. The Redback featured the Iron Fist system developed by Elbit Systems, the critical difference lay in the integration architecture. The turret of the Redback was engineered to house the Iron Fist system as an integral part of its structure. This native integration allowed for a lower center of gravity and better distribution of weight. 
Conversely, the integration of active protection systems on the links appeared more like an add onto an existing design, which can compromise the balance and profile of the vehicle. The Australian assessors prioritized the mature, deeply integrated design that minimized technical risk. Beyond the hardware, the industrial strategy employed by Hanwha Aerospace played a significant role in the final decision. The proposal included the construction of the Hanwha Armored Vehicle Center of Excellence in Geelong in the state of Victoria. This facility was not pitched merely as an assembly line, but as a sovereign industrial asset for Australia. By transferring technology and establishing a manufacturing base capable of supplying not just the Australian Army, but potentially other international markets, South Korea offered a partnership model that resonated with Canberra. This approach mirrors the industrial development path South Korea itself traveled decades ago, moving from a buyer of weapons to a licensor and finally to an independent innovator. The offer effectively turned Australia into a regional hub for the Redback, satisfying the political requirement for domestic job creation and industrial resilience. The selection of the Redback creates a new paradigm for South Korean defense exports. Historically, Korean weapon systems such as the K-9 Thunder, self-propelled howitzer, were marketed on a value proposition that combined good performance with rapid delivery and competitive pricing. The red back success alters this narrative. The Australian tender was one of the most rigorous and expensive evaluation processes in the world. By defeating the flagship product of Rheinmetall in a head-to-head -head technical evaluation, the South Korean industry has proven it can compete on pure performance. The Redback is a premium product with a price tag to match, and it was selected by a Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance member solely on its merits. This victory also highlights the agility of South Korean engineering in incorporating subsystems from various global partners. The red back is a synthesis of Korean mobility and hull design, an Australian turret structure, Israeli active protection systems, and American communication architecture. This ability to act as a sophisticated systems integrator allows South Korea to bypass the rigid, vertically integrated supply chains that often slow down European manufacturers. It enables a level of customization that is highly attractive to nations with specific strategic needs. The strategic implications extend to the geopolitical landscape of the Indo-Pacific. As Australia seeks to bolster its defenses amidst rising regional tensions, the interoperability and reliability of its land forces are paramount. The choice of a South Korean partner strengthens the security ties between two key U.S. allies in the region. It creates a logistical bridge between Northeast Asia and the South Pacific, fostering a degree of standardization in equipment and doctrine. In conclusion, the AS-21 Redback program demonstrates that the South Korean defense industry has graduated from being a fast follower to a market leader. The success in Australia was achieved by identifying the specific pain points of the customer, such as the need for long-range mobility without crew fatigue, and applying innovative engineering solutions like composite rubber tracks to solve them. It challenged the assumption that European engineering holds a monopoly on quality in the heavy armor segment. By securing this contract, Hanwha Aerospace has not only expanded its market share, but has also elevated the brand equity of South Korean defense technology to a tier previously reserved for the United States and major European powers. 
The red back stands as a case study in how technical flexibility and industrial partnership can overcome entrenched market dominance.